Yes, kids at home, race car building is that easy. You just pull stuff and it all comes off magically. Well, hey guys, Casey Putsch from Genius Garage here and I'm with students Isaac and Peyton. So we got Project Racing Go-Kart on the cheap. Yes. <laughs> so lots of people end up writing me about, hey, I'm an, a young engineering student or I want to get into racing, where do I start? I always say kart racing, it's like the perfect test. But for the sake of Genius Garage, it also has value too to engineering students because it's an opportunity uh, in a safe environment to let them get on to something that's a high performance machine and actually make changes, see how they affect things, the dynamics, vehicle dynamics, and uh, learn from that as well as have some fun, which is kind of the bummer about the professional level racing stuff because they're expensive and difficult to run and drive and require a professional level driver. But this is gonna be a lot of fun. And recently, where did we go, you guys? Fremont Raceway Park. Yeah, what'd you think of that? It was great. Um, I'd ridden go-karts before, um, but nothing of this caliber. Uh, I've ridden go-karts like at Pigeon Forge with the little lawnmower engines, you know, that go like 10 <laughs> miles an hour or so. And so I thought I had some sort of, oh yeah, I can do this in my head. Like, but, and then I get on the track and I'm like, oh shoot, this is ridiculous. <laughs> what do you think? He's de Isaac's definitely right. It is a whole nother animal. You know, you think you have these preconceptions of what it's gonna be like. You know, I have been in a fast car. I've been around corners quick. The difference between a go-kart or a race car and a fast road car or supercar is night and day. Uh, there is no comparison, honestly, um, between the cornering forces and the acceleration that you can experience in something like this versus you know anything totally. that you can get on the road. Totally. You know, and as in nature, and the reason why we're doing this is uh, a couple of fold. One, for people out there that autocross, you know, that's one kind of world. For people out there that road race, it's another world. But the only thing that you can reasonably do to translate to professional level stuff like an Indy car or even the IMSA Corvette or the prototype is kart racing. Because those are the real dynamics. And that's why I said it's the test for anybody that wants to get into racing or enjoys that because it's not really glamorous but you can do it on the cheap and it's really difficult and exciting. Mm -hmm. So if you actually have the gumption to build a cart, race a cart, restore a cart, do that, you're gonna learn and you actually have the chance to go be a racing driver or put your engineering at work rather than just go pretending to be a racing driver. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Totally. So with this regard, we uh, were cheap. We didn't want to spend a lot of money. So Peyton, how do we do that? You know, we perused around Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist looking for, you know, a, a good runnable cart that wasn't in, uh, you know, perfect condition, but something that we could fix up and, uh, and run, but had good structural and, and safety uh, standards. Yeah, well, and what are those safety standards right now? <laughs> uh, essentially, the frame has to not be broken and yeah. the brakes have to kind of work. We set the bar high, people, <laughs> but said, no, it's good, we can fix that. Um, Yes, we did. We actually, Facebook Marketplace is a great resource. Uh, you know, if you bought all new stuff, new engine, new frames, everything, you might spend six to $10,000 on a cart setup alone. We wanted to spend a tenth of that, right? Yeah. Or less. So we found this cart, they're asking about $1,000 for it. I talked him down to $800 on the phone. Met the guy, actually it was kind of more beat than we thought, so I talked him down to $650. It's a trick chassis, which is from probably the early 2000s, which actually works just fine because truth of the matter about kart racing, chassis haven't changed much. It really comes down to the tires, the motor, and what your side panels are. So this is the old school side panel rather than pods and whatnot. But uh, you know, the chassis was straight. We have no idea how much time is on it. You know, you're taking a little bit of risk there in the motor. But that's a great opportunity. And for this series, we're gonna take it apart today. Then the next video, we're gonna totally rebuild it on the cheap. <laughs> and uh, which would be a good thing too. Can we go win a race? with a super cheap go-kart, yeah. you know what I mean? And learn, and then have something good for you guys to drive and learn and test and tune, and then translate that to engineering or real race cars in the future. 100%. What else, what do you think? I mean, it's gonna be something that anybody can do, and it's gonna be super fun, and also teach you how to become a better driver and actually teach you what racing feels like. Definitely. And the, you know, the engineering that goes into this is just the same as it is a real racing car, the dynamics, or even a slot car, regular control car. Yeah, just so, scale up. Yeah. So uh, what's, what's the rest of this junk we got with when we bought it? Here, we got some, <laughs> we got some panels. These are the old school fronts. They sort of look like an elephant. What else is here? What do you got? We've got these whole stack of left side panels. Yes, we got no right ones, Not except what's on the cart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you got? Some oil. Oh, we got some oil. What else you got? 
Oh, we got more of these. Ooh, the one back here is pretty sweet. It's got like this crazy, like alien lightning spatter paint. Yeah, we're not, we're not gonna do that. Maybe you can run that. Okay. Well, hanging on that wall is art. We got two front tires of wheels, which are junk, and we'll go from there. So, yeah. you wanna, wanna start taking it apart? Let's Absolutely. Okay. We have to weigh this thing to uh, comply to our minimum weight requirement of 360 pounds with the cart and driver. So. So our cart weighs uh, 156 pounds. Um, for our lightest driver, we would have to add about 32 pounds, um, which means we're gonna have to find a spot to put 32 pounds of weight where it won't upset the weight balance of the cart. Okay, so we have unbolted everything and we're gonna take everything apart now that we've weighed it. <laughs> yes, kids at home, race car building is that easy. You just pull stuff and it all comes off magically. Unless you're Peyton. Shut up. <laughs> this is amazing. Who needs to speed anything up? Oh, good lord, the engine's going to fall off. Sorry, slide backwards. <laughs> I know, but it's still tight. There you go. There you go, slugger. Steering wheel, steering wheel. There goes the engine. Who needs that? Like this? Okay, so the air chassis. All right. Wow, look at that. So we're in that. Magic. <laughs> That Done. went from something to nothing. Easy. Really quick. <laughs> you ruined it. I did. Well guys, it's all stripped down here for the first episode of those coming up. In the next one, we're gonna start putting it back together. But meanwhile, what do we find, guys? What are you thinking? I mean, it's a pretty solid buy for 650 bucks. Sure. Yeah. What do you think of the chassis and the parts and components? Everything's a little rough around the edges, but uh, yeah, we should be able to make something yeah. out of it. Worst thing we found, actually, there was a crack in the motor mount, which is really good to know, because that really started coming apart in the race. So we're gonna have to either repair or replace that. Uh, beyond that, there's a few things to straighten up and you know, we gotta get some odds and ends, but uh, should go together really nice the next time. Absolutely. Look forward? Oh yeah. All right, I hope you guys like our cheap go-kart racing video build. <laughs> you subscribe and catch on the next one.